Okay, so let's get started. So today's uh, topic is on impact. When two bodies uh, collide with each other, what happens? And well, how to analyze the system when two bodies collide? So brief overview of uh, system with system that impact with each other. So specifically, we'll, we'll do some uh, simple uh, analysis. This is only collision of two bodies at a time. We won't be considering more than two bodies colliding with each other. When it comes to looking at collision of two bodies, there are two types of impacts. One is the central impact. And the other one is uh, oblique impact. So let's look at the central impact. So if there are two bodies and they are uh, traveling in the same direction. Like so and they make an impact then that's called central impact so this is this line here which I drew is the line joining their centers of mass and that line is along the direction of their velocities okay an example of this would be a head-on collision if you're on the wrong side of, wrong side of the interstate then this is what can happen it's really bad right uh, so how do you analyze such a system? Well, typically what happens is you're given velocities before impact, right? And you go to find the velocities after impact. That's the typical question. And you know the masses of the bodies. Uh, so what you do is you use uh, conservation of linear momentum. which states that the summation of mass times velocity i so I'll put the suffix uh, 1 to indicate the instance before impact equals the summation of mass times velocity after impact so 1 before impact 2 is So I said everything on the left side is usually known. You know the velocity, you know the mass. What's unknown is on the right hand side. You do not know the velocities of A and B after impact. Okay? So that is a single equation and it has two unknowns, the velocities of the bodies after impact. So how do you find the velocities with just one equation? You cannot, right? You need another equation. So the other equation comes from what is known as uh, Newton's law of restitution. So E is defined is well that's the coefficient of restitution. It's the ratio of velocity of separation divided by velocity of approach. So in this case it's going to be V B uh, well this is A this is B, this mass is B, say this mass is A, then VB minus sorry, VB2 because that's the velocity after impact, VA2 divided by VB1 
VA1 minus bit confusing that you have VB2 minus VA2 and VA1 minus VB2, it's not the same one. So the way I'm typically write the equation is I, 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 I write it, so I like to write it like this. This is how the book defines it, and I'm going to write it in a slightly different way, but it's basically the same formula. I write it as minus E equals VB2 2 minus VA2 divided by VB1 minus VA1. So what I've done here is I've swapped the denominator, the times in the denominator. I've switched this, but I also switched the E, so the math comes out right, because the E, the negative sign on both sides cancel off. I like to write it this way because it's much easier to remember, right? B minus, B minus A after B minus A before so it's up to you. If the book writes it that writes it that way, that's the definition. I just said like to write it this way. Okay, so what is E? Well E is uh, an experimental determined quantity just like coefficient of friction is. Right, how do you find the coefficient of friction? Well, you put a block on a plane and you keep increasing the slope till the block slides in that slope of that plane is basically the coefficient of friction. E is determined the same way, well, not the same way, but the same experiment, which is you drop a ball and you find how high the ball uh, comes back after you drop it and then there's the relation between E and the height before and after the impact. So you would be given E, or you might be told to find E, given the things on the right side. So let's uh, look at E, okay? Um, So normally, E would be between 0 and 1, but E equals 0 is what is known as a plastic collision. So if you drop a ball and it doesn't rebound after it, after, after it hits the floor or the ground, then it's called a plastic collision, it sticks to the ground. If E equals 1, okay. That's an elastic collision. So if you drop a ball, if it springs back to uh, springs back to the same height, then it's a perfectly elastic collision. And uh, this is no normally the case. Usual. Case. So oblique impact is when um, if you draw the a line from the center of mass of the two particles, so that's the line of impact that doesn't change. Uh, but the velocities of the particles are in in directions which are different from the line of impact, then we have what is known as an oblique impact. So an example of this in the world of collision with cars is that uh, during a stop, when you have a stop sign, right, and if people don't break stop signs, then you'll have an oblique impact. 
the less catastrophic than the head-on ones, right? Okay, so how do you analyze this, these types of uh, motions? Well, uh, again, typically you know the velocities before impact and you got to find the velocities after impact, right? So there are two unknowns. Well, not two technically, there are more than two unknowns. You not only need to know the velocities after impact, you also need to know the direction which the velocities are. So you actually have four unknowns. Velocities uh, after impact, the magnitude, and also the direction of uh, the, the angle made by the velocity. So uh, we'll set up the equations for this. Conservation of momentum along line of impact okay which is the same formula as earlier which is m i v i x sorry let me write this as v i x indicating that the velocity in the x direction for uh, a and b before collision equals summation m i v i x 2 where 1 is before and 2 is after. So then conservation of momentum normal to line impact. M A. So M A Y A Y is the momentum of A in the y direction before impact equals M A V A Y after impact and M B V B Y equals M B V B Y two. So note that in the first equation I have the sum. In the second equation I only have each of those each of those particles separately. And then finally, so well, so I have as I said four unknowns, right? Velocity of A and B after impact and direction of uh, direction after direction which they fly off after collision. So I better have four equations, I, else I cannot solve it. So one, two, and three are just three equations. I need a fourth equation to solve it. The fourth equation is com comes from the coefficient of restitution, which says that uh, minus e equals velocity of b in the x direction after impact minus velocity of b, sorry, velocity of a in the x direction after impact divided by velocity of b in the x direction before impact minus velocity of a in the x direction before impact yeah yeah but it's the same thing same formula uh, okay so that's the fourth equation and uh, that one is the mistake common mistake people do is they do not apply it in the correct way. You have to only apply that equation along the line of impact. What I mean by that is everything in that equation is along the x-axis or the, the line of impact. Don't apply that equation in the y direction. Okay? It's only in the x direction. So that's the fourth equation which will help you to solve for the four unknowns. Any questions on this? So four equations and four unknowns. P A two. The four unknowns are V P X two P B Y two P A X two V 
a y two. Okay, so let's try to solve this problem. Apply what we just done. Uh, half a kg ball is fired from tube at A with a velocity of six meters per second. If the coefficient of restitution between the ball and the surface is uh, 0.8, so 0.8 z, determine the height after it bounces off the surface. So this is an unknown. Okay, so well, one way to do this is to ask yourself, if you want to find the height, h, then you better know the velocity here, right? If you know the velocity with which you, which this ball leaves the ground, then you can find height, h. So then if you want to find the velocity, how can you relate it back to velocity over here? Well, uh, you know the coefficient of restitution, which means that if you can find a velocity over here, that is velocity before impact, then you can find a relation between velocity after impact and velocity before impact using E. So we got to find the velocity before impact. So then we have to somehow find a relation in this V and this V. And finding that relation is just a project uh, the projectile problem, which we did in the right in the first uh, first few weeks of this class, right? So can we find the velocity just before collision? We can. So let's try to do that. So this is the first part is kinematics. And the kinematics are used from A to B. So let's call this uh, V0. Let's call this V1. Okay. We want to find V1. More specifically, we want to find V1 in the y direction. And the reason is because the, the coefficient of restitution equation is written in the, in the direction which the collision takes place, which is basically in the y direction. So V1, y. So V1, y. Uh, so there are three equations, right? V squared equals V0 squared plus 2ax. V equals u plus at. And s equals ut plus half at squared. In this case, you can see that they're given the distance s. And there's nothing about time here. So let's try to use the equation, which is v1 y squared equals v0 y squared minus 2g times y. So v1 y squared equals v0 y. So the velocity in the y direction is going to be 6 sine 30 degrees minus 2 times 9.81 times the height is 2. I think there's something wrong in that. The sub the values are substituted. Mm -hmm. Sort of. No, y is two. So I think so. This is the original formula. It's that's the formula, right? The formula is plus two a y. Uh, what the mistake I did was the acceleration is negative. That's why I written minus g. But the height is also negative. Because it's, it's, it's downward. So it's not the, so the formula is that one which is derived, we derived in the earlier classes. And when you sub in g and y with the right sign, you should actually get a positive sign. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's how it is launched. This is going to be positive y. This height is minus two. Okay. 
that two comes here and g is this way in the negative direction that's why this comes here so v1 y comes out to be 6.94 meters per second Also, if you use a negative sign, you see that velocity y, v1 y, will become less than 6 sin 30, which is uh, 3. And that's not possible. The velocity has to increase, right? If you drop a ball down, the velocity should be greater than uh, what it starts off with. Okay, so that, that's uh, kinematics. Now let's try to use uh, collision. The equation for collision. at p okay uh, i'll actually derive a formula which you can use then start using when you have collision with the ground right so this is a ball colliding with the ground so what's the definition of e it is velocity of the two bodies which are involved in the collision one is the ball and the other body is the ground right so velocity ground after collision minus velocity ball after collision divided by velocity of ground before collision minus velocity of ball before collision okay. this is just the definition of of e velocity of separation divided by velocity of approach of the two bodies involved in this now, the question is, what is the velocity of ground before collision? Zero. It's zero. What's the velocity after collision? Zero. Right. So technically, it is not. It is, should be. So there is no velocity. Right. So it's, it's such a mass. Uh, so when you say ground, it's really the earth. And earth is so massive that a ball getting dropped doesn't really move the. It'll probably be microns or nano, I don't know, nanometers. But for all practical purposes, that's zero. So. What you can do is you can actually, so henceforth when you have collisions with the ground, you do not have to do this math which I did over here. You can directly write this as V ball after V ball before. Okay, so do not write, derive that, just use that formula. Minus E is velocity before divided by velocity. Velocity after divided by velocity before. So velocity after is, let's call that v1, uh, v2y, and v4 is v1y. Okay. So e is 0.8. Velocity b after collision is unknown. Velocity before collision is 6.94. So velocity 2y is equal to. negative 5.5 meters per second so you can see that the velocity is comes out to be negative which means that if you assume uh, the velocity before collision was downward so actually switch the signs a little bit there. Actually, I started with negative 6.94 to begin with, because velocity 2y, when you, when you take the square root, you get plus or minus, so it's really the minus sign which holds because it's negative. Anyway, what you got to know is that velocity after collision is going to be negative of velocity before, which makes sense, because it's going to reverse direction. Uh, 5.6, okay, 5.6. Let me just correct this. Let me just put negative here because there are two signs. I'm going to use the negative sign. And so let's put negative here. So that's positive. So this way we know it's upwards. And this is downwards. Okay, so in order to find the height, so mo motion from kinematics from 
B to C. So the same formula holds true, which is this one. Velocity of 2 y equals velocity to I'll put h here indicating that's at the height h square velocity to y initial plus 2 a y so velocity at the apex so what's the velocity at the apex in the y direction here what's the velocity in the y direction at the apex no, g is acceleration. It has to be zero, right? At the apex, the the fact that the ball is not rising any more high means that the velocity in the y direction is zero. So the only velocity in the x direction. So this is zero. Velocity two y is five point six square. Uh, a is minus nine point eight one. Y is h. So. We can solve for h. It's 1.57 meters. Well, in this case, you, uh, what I found is velocity in the y direction. I, I could have also found, found the velocity. So yes, you're asking if at b, this is velocity of 2. I found this component. You are, you're asking, can I, do I need this component? Well, I do not need this component to, for this specific problem. But if I asked you now, uh, what's the range? Where does it drop? Then yeah, you got to find v two x. But what is v two x? You know what v two x is? It's same. So v two x is actually six cosine thirty. How did I get six cosine thirty? It's basically this v cosine thirty. So the velocity six cosine thirty degrees. The collision is in the normal direction, right? And that has no influence on the velocity in the y in the x direction. Okay, so it remains the same. So if you are asked to find velocity in the x direction, uh, it is basically the same as what it started with. Yep. Anything else? How how was the exam? <laughs> you couldn't make it to the exam. What? How was the exam? Did did did, uh, did you get enough time? Yeah. Okay, the time was good. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's just uh, there were just two questions that I had no idea how to solve. There was uh, one B, I think. Okay, that's ten points. And one B. Yeah. I was just like I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, what's was the other question that you? Yeah, I did a problem in normal force zero, right, in the class. I think I did a problem in that. Yeah, I, let me see what the question was. It can be zero. There was a similar one in the book. It was talking about like a car that's So I just have normal force is zero when you can pull like. Yeah, yeah. Think of it this way: if you if you go to Six Flags and you're doing this, there's something holding you onto your seat. It's basically the centripetal force when you're going in circles. So there's a acceleration the holding. And the time velocity is not the square root of two g a. No. 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 The g is always uh, trying to pull you down. But if you're spinning fast enough, then the centripetal acceleration, which is v square divided by r, tends to push you against the against the wall. So when mg equals mv squared divided by r, that's when you're in trouble. Normal force is zero. And you're going to fall down. Uh, yeah, I, got, I got like one a big number for the, for the supreme. So I, I 
Okay. So one B is from the book, by the way. So the, the, the figures from the book. Uh, we might have changed the question. One B. Oh, yeah, one B was that was I guess our question, which was supposed to be it's not supposed to be hard, but then it was out of a different textbook. Uh, so what depends like don't do like. SI you use like you always have to convert this like American units and like pounds and stuff. Always use that and like it cannot convert it. No, just if it's uh, uh, FPS then just use FPS. If it's SI just use SI. Uh, and most of the questions were pounds and some of them were see the first the first book. Like the, the, the I don't think that was if, if you are in America, you go on a footprint. That's the problem. <laughs> I mean, I if you are anywhere in the world, the you, you don't you don't have to bother about footprint. It's only in America where you are supposed to wear it because that's how it is, right? Miles and signs they never But it turns out that in the U.S., everywhere people still use. Uh, if you were to design something, and you speak with, say, the technicians who are doing the design, they are more used to uh, 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 not SI units, but they are inch pound. So for the uh, horsepower and all that, we'll have you on the next on the next exam. It could be. <laughs> yes. So. I think that's what we decided that we're going to have a question on force and velocity, power, and, 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 and efficiency. The next exam is our last one. Yes. So, will you give me some minutes to the Yes, it is comprehensive, absolutely. <laughs> so, will you write this? Can you write stay set for somebody, something specific? No, so what I have noticed with, uh, with, uh, with all the instructors is that we tend to uh, find out problems which cover everything. So, which means that you'll have equal uh, representation from all chapters. Mm -hmm. Or you might have a little bit more from these two because we didn't test you on those. So, we have to study the whole book? You have to, yeah. <laughs> you have to study all eight chapters. <laughs> yeah? You are making someone Let me talk with the other guys uh, and see what they have to say. Yeah. This was somebody's idea. I I was my no idea. idea. What about eye clickers? I was no eye clickers. <laughs> no eye clickers. Uh, oh, because you, okay, because of thanks, you don't want to come. I thought you you meant recitation. I thought you meant recitation. Yeah. So I think there's no recitation. It's Monday morning, Thursday. Yeah, so you don't have to go for restitution if you don't want to. Uh, you're asking for uh, classes on uh, Wednesday. Yeah, Unfortunately, I have to. Uh, if you look at the syllabus, there's no leeway for me to cancel it because if I don't do it, yeah, if I don't do it, then I I just don't do it because it's also cramped. <coughs> so two smooth billiard balls A and B each have a mass of 200 grams. If A strikes B okay, with a velocity of 1.5 meters per second as shown, determine the fi their final velocities just after collision. Ball B is originally at rest, so velocity of ball 1 is 0, and the coefficient of restitution is 0.85. Neglect the size of each ball. So this is where we can actually uh, do what I, I laid down, right? Uh, you pretty much have uh, four unknowns and you've written four equations. So let's see that in action over here. So let's write the number of unknowns here and the knowns. So velocity of A before impact is 1.5 meters per second. Okay, hold on. I would, I would rather write this in slightly differently. Let me write velocity of A in the x direction. So velocity of A in the x direction, what's that going to be? It's 1.5 cosine of 40.
Okay, if you want, if you like, you can put a negative sign. I think it's a good idea to put the sign because the velocity is in the negative x direction. Velocity of a in the y direction is going to be 1.5 sine of 40 degrees. It's going to be in the negative y direction. So velocity of b in the x direction before collision is velocity of b in the y direction before collision and that's zero. That's because the velocity of b is zero. <coughs> so the unknowns are velocity of x after collision, velocity of x, sorry, a in the y direction after collision, velocity of b in the x direction after collision, velocity of b in the y direction after collision are unknown. So four unknowns. Okay, I'm going to call this have some mass m and I don't really quite need to sub in the value of m because uh, in theory equations m so basically cancel out. So m is 200 grams. So let's start writing the equations of uh, equations in order to analyze this. So conservation of momentum along x axis m v a x 1 plus m v b x 1 equals m v a x after collision plus m v b x after collision the second equation is conservation of momentum along the line normal to the line of impact so along y axis so for that mass times velocity of a in the y direction before collision is mass times velocity of a in the y direction after collision and same thing for b velocity of b in the y direction after collision before collision is mass times velocity b in the y direction of after collision so those are well that's the question one two one two three so when you sub in you better put the same sign which i wrote there don't put positive don't put the value so you have to put for example here you'll have to put uh by the way this is minus 1.1491 and this is minus 0.96 or two. So when you're subbing in, you want to put velocity of x is minus 1.14 and velocity of b is, uh, well, zero. But it's important to put a negative sign, otherwise it's going to mess up the, the answer. Okay, you've got to put the sign there, it's very important. That equation is actually a vector equation, I just wrote it down as a scalar equation by looking at it in the x and y direction. So we have three equations, but we have four unknowns, so I need to generate the fourth equation, that comes from uh, the definition of restitution which says that velocity in the x direction after impact so velocity of separation after impact is velocity of separation before impact this is 0.85 Yes, I'll leave, I'll write the answers, but I'll leave it for you to, to uh, solve for the four unknowns. Solve for the four unknowns using the four equations. 
to get velocity of a in the x direction after collision is minus 0 0.08618 velocity of a in the y direction after collision is minus 0.9642 velocity of b in the x direction after collision equals 0 velocity of b in the y direction after collision is equal to minus 1.06 sorry my bad this is wrong this is minus 1.06 3 is the velocity in x and 0 is the velocity in y. 